Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me start by asking you a question. How many of you have heard the statement, do not put all your eggs in one basket? I'm sure many of you have come across this statement. The idea of not putting your eggs in one basket is what diversification is all about. When this idea is applied to a sugar company or any other business, it is about not having your revenue coming from one source, but more importantly, coming from markets with different characteristics. This morning, I'm going to share with you how Ubombo Sugar, a division of Ilovo Sugar Africa, created a new revenue stream from core generation. So how do we characterize the, the sugar market? Volatile sugar prices, changing consumer tests, market access risks, and the ever-growing threat of climate change. On the other hand, how do we characterize the electricity market? Ever-increasing prices, a growing demand, and governments promoting renewable energy partly as, a, as an effort and an attempt to fight climate change. What we see here are two markets with different characteristics. And this is what you want to see when you are talking about diversification. My goal today is to leave you with some insights on how you can diversify your revenue streams and how diversification works. On the next slide, I will talk about the case for diversification which I will explain more in detail uh, in the next slide. So what was the business case for core generation? The first reason is that we were already doing this for a long time. So typically when you go into a new market segment, you may find yourself in a situation where you have to use a different technology. And as a result, you introduce uh, technology risk. In this particular case, there was no technology risk because we were using uh, the same technology that we've used for a long time. The second reason was that core generation turned out to be a very good strategy for coping with systemic weather risks, uh, foreign exchange risks, and price volatility. About 30 kilometers from, from our sugar factory, there was a project called the Lower Sutu Smallholder Irrigation Project, which was promoted by the Eswatini government uh, to develop 9,000 hectares of new cane. And as a result of this project, we now had an additional source for bagasse, which we'll then use as fuel for this, for this project. The government was also working hard to become self-sufficient while promoting the renewable energy sector. And as a result, it provided a growing market for our core generation project. I'll explain what core generation is on the next slide. For those of you who are new to the subject, core generation is simply the production of electricity in a sugar factory using bagasse as a fuel, uh, boilers to generate steam, and table alternators which, which generate the electri electricity. The electricity can be for your own use, uh, in this case to run, to run the factory, as well as to irrigate our cane fields, as well as to supply electricity for, for our villages uh, and some of the stakeholders in our community. The second use is typically to sell the electricity to customers, usually through the national grid, which is what we are doing in this particular, in this particular project, where the electricity that we generate is sold to the Eswatini Electricity Company, which is uh, the utility in the country. Then the second stream is the traditional stream of producing 
uh, refined uh, and raw sugar. On the next slide, I will share with you the components of our core generation project. On the left, there is the Lucy project where the, the can came from. Uh, this is the source of the fuel. Uh, in the middle is the powerhouse that we invested in. And on the right is the core generation plant where we have the table alternator that generates the power. In the next slide, I'm going to share with you the critical success factors that you need uh, to have in place to have a successful core generation project. The first important critical success factor is obviously a growing market. What we see in the graph here on the, at the bottom here is, is a market that's growing, consistently growing since we started our project. The second one is that you need, when you are selling the power to a, to a utility, you need a power purchase agreement, commonly called PP, a PPA. And this is a very rigorous engagement process involving negotiations, multi-year discussions, multi-year negotiations. In this particular case, it took us uh, over three years to conclude this power purchase agreement. Once you've signed a power purchase agreement with, with the utility, you then have to engage with the regulator who controls the pricing as well as the issuing of the license for you to generate power. And once you have all these things in place, you then you are good to go in terms of having a, a successful core generation project. On the next slide, I'm showing how we have performed. It's one thing wanting to enter into a, a new area of business. It's another to do a good job in that particular area. What we see here in the graph on the, on the left, we have the, the, the dark green, which is the power purchase agreement target. So this is what we committed to delivering in 2011. And on the right, we see the light green, which is what we actually produced. So since we commissioned our core generation plant in 2011, what we see is a performance which is consistently better than, than the power purchase agreement. So when we started out, the question was, what does a sugar company know how to produce electricity? And I think we've proven that we can do this very well. I would just like to call out uh, this, this year here in 2016. 2016, some of you may remember in Southern Africa was, was when we experienced a one in a 200 year drought. And whenever you, you are a supplier of any service or commodity, what is very important to, is to be able to demonstrate that your, your system is robust. And this drought, even at the peak of this drought, we were still able to produce electricity way within the threshold of 85% of the PPA target, demonstrating that even under very difficult conditions, we are still able to be a reliable supplier of electricity. On the next slide, I'm showing in these two graphs on the left, we have the price of sugar on the, y, on the first y-axis. And on the right, we have the indexed electricity price. In the introduction, I spoke about diversification being about markets that have different characteristics. So what we see here is the price of electricity going up, the price of sugar coming down, and this is what essentially what diversification is about. You have two markets that you are serving which do not move together. And that is what is commonly called the diversification effect. 
So what we can conclude from, from this graph is that the diversification effect from core generation was realized. At the end of the day, is this showing in the bottom line? In the pie chart on the right, what we can see is, is that we now have two sources of revenue. 65% of our profits are coming from sugar and 35% coming from coal generation. Whereas before we would have had one revenue stream, now we have two demonstrating that diversification has worked for Ibongo Sugar. In the next slide, I will share with you some of the future developments that we are working on uh, as we continue to grow this very important area of our business. Firstly, we are looking to reduce our internal load. In the past, before we entered the core generation business, if we had invested in any improvements in energy efficiency in the factory or in our agriculture operations, all that would have done was to reduce our costs. What we have now is a situation where whatever electricity we save, we reduce our costs, but at the same time, we're able to sell that electricity that, we, that we've released, and then we benefit in two ways, selling the electricity or also reduce our operating costs. So it, it becomes a much more compelling case to be able to invest in reducing our internal loads in the factory and in agriculture. We are also working to maximize the power that we export to the electricity company. Recently, they issued two tenders, one which was for 40 megawatts of solar power, and then the second one, which is 40 megawatts of additional biomass power. So this is another opportunity that we now have to further invest and grow this business. And it just supports the business case that I outlined at the beginning, uh, that when you enter a growing market, you have an opportunity to continue to grow, to grow the market. The other component that we're working on is that as most of you are aware, we enter a, a period which is called off crop when we are not, when we are not crashing. And as a result, you are not generating electricity. What we are looking to do is to bring additional fuel. We are privileged in Eswatini to have a very big forestry industry. So we are able to buy wood chips that we can use as fuel and we bring that fuel after we've closed our factories and then we can generate electricity for up to 48 weeks without investing any capital uh, and then extend it to 52 week uh, core generation by investing a bit of capital. So these are some of the areas that we are working on uh, to grow the core generation business. So in closing, let me go back to my topic of diversification of revenue streams for a sugar company or any other business. I hope I've shown you that the sugar and electricity markets are two different buckets for you to put your eggs in. I've also shown you that diversification of revenue streams is, is not simply about doing many different things. It is about earning revenues from markets with different characteristics, which is clearly the case with the sugar and electricity markets. For reasons outlined in my introduction, such as volatile sugar prices, changing consumer tests, systemic weather risks, diversification of revenue streams through core generation and other means is a very important topic for all of us attending this conference today. Thank you for listening.